I just love that video. It really, I think it just draws you in and, and shows uh, every one of those pictures and, and depictions just shows something that you can do as you start with this, this degree. It just, it really shows the things that you can move towards and, and forward to. So certainly this is a fire degree and there were some fire depictions there, but a lot of other things that you can do with it as well. All right. So what is our program? This program, the Fire Science Associates Transfer Degree, is a full-time program of study. It prepares you for a career in the fire service, as well as career advancement. This degree prepares you for the work testing. So to get a job as a firefighter, there are a lot of uh, pre-employment tests and screenings. So work attitudes and then the fire team test. There's assessments, there's oral board exams, and then pre-employment screenings. And this degree is to help set you up for success throughout that pretty rigorous process. This degree also helps current firefighters and incumbent workers to qualify for career advancement opportunities. So one of the exciting things about this program is we are going to have some young students, maybe even high school age students or, or just after high school that, that have decided that they want to start to pursue a career in the fire service. But alongside those students, we're also going to have some, some mentors, some incumbent firefighters, folks that are already working in the field who want promotional opportunities or, um, or salary in increases. I know that one of our regional fire departments offers 2% extra on top of their salary if they have an associate's degree, an additional 4% if they have a bachelor's degree. So we have a lot of firefighters that want to come back and get this degree just to earn more money or just to be able to, to promote into different fire officer positions. So you'll have a really good opportunity to, to make just a little bit more money. This program is going to start this fall. So uh, just starting this September, it's the very last week and fall of 2021 is when our first cohort is going to start. And the entry requirements, you have to be eligible to, to enroll in, in classes here at North Seattle College. Our program helps build the foundation of the skills needed to build or enhance a fire service career. We're going to utilize comprehensive curriculum taught by subject matter experts. We're going to be hiring in experts. So uh, current firefighters, maybe fire officers, chiefs, um, other, other folks that, that have degrees and expertise in adult education. And these folks are going to help utilize that comprehensive curriculum that was developed by the National Fire Academy. And again, this program meets the academic and career needs for both those who want to start to enter this field and those who are looking to advance careers. So what's your time commitment? We've dedicated this, uh, what we've done is created this class so that it, we expect that it's a full-time class. Certainly there's a little bit of wiggle room based on maybe some of the classes that you've already taken, but our intent is that this program is going to take two years to complete, especially for somebody just entering college and just entering the workforce. Every quarter, we're gonna have two classes of fire service content in addition to the opportunity that you're gonna take a general education class. So for fall class, we're gonna have fire, uh, it's fire 101, which is principles of emergency services and fire 102, which is fire behavior and combustion. And then our recommendation is that you take English 101 on top of that. Of course, if you already have your English class done, maybe you've done running start or you have some other college experience, then you would really only be taking these two fire classes or you could take another elective, something like that. So we expect a full load, but again, there's a tiny bit of wiggle room in that. And we're gonna have this full load throughout the course of two years. And at the end of that two year period of time, you'll graduate with your associate's degree in fire science. So what do you learn? Gosh, there's gonna be so much coming towards you that that's gonna help to, to set you up for success in the testing process for fire. Or if you're not sure that you want to be a firefighter, there's a lot of other things that you can learn with that. But really setting the stage and those fundamentals of, of learning the basics of what you need to be successful in a fire career or a public safety career, um, it's also going to give the opportunity to work with and network with other folks who are already in that service. It's a great place to start if you're not sure what you want to do, because you can start to learn about a lot of the different job opportunities. In the fire department, um, as that video was showing you, there's just a lot of different opportunities. And every single one of those pictures was a job that's in this service. So the fire department needs dispatchers and they need EMTs and paramedics and they need firefighters and they need search and rescue. They need high angle rescue teams and things like that. So, so this is gonna give you the, the basics and the fundamentals of all that academic knowledge. We're not a fire academy. That is something you'll do separately after you get hired, but this degree sets you up for success to get hired. 
So I know this is a little bit hard to read. Um, at the very end of my presentation, there's a link for the, the website that we've created, and this is going to be on there. But this is an overview of, of what the degree requirements are going to be. So at the top, we've just listed those, those general education, those uh, related instruction. So you need an English class to get a degree. You need a math class to get a degree. You need a, a science class, so natural world. There's an interpersonal communication for the workplace class or some other human relations course, and then intercultural communication. We just think that that is so important right now in our culture and society. So an intercultural communication or some class that has a global studies component is going to be part of your general education requirements. Then we've got the core degree requirements. And these are the ones I was speaking of. So this fall, we've got principles of emergency services and fire and behavior and combustion. And then in the winter quarter, we'll have building instruction for fire protection and principles of fire and emergency services, safety and survival. And then the following quarter would be next spring, fire prevention and legal aspects and so on. You can see how this just maps out. One of the things that's pretty exciting for, for me to share with you, at the very bottom there, you can see we've got an internship or a practicum. And this is going to give you an opportunity to, to really get in. It's not just going to be online classes. You, get, you will get an opportunity to get into some fire service settings and experience different opportunities and meet some different people. We'll talk about that again in just a minute here. Our, uh, the program, again, has the internship. And it's going to be great. Um, it's not going to be a very specific prescribed. We're not going to tell you exactly what you have to do, but this degree is going to have some opportunities that you can choose from. You can apply to certain internships or you can sign up for some of them. And we'll have some bit of wiggle room that, that if you already have an into a fire department, that maybe we can create something that really is in line with exactly what you want to be doing. So we can help you find an internship. Um, you can start to navigate that on your own with some guidance from one of our advisors a really wonderful opportunity to get in. We're working with Seattle Fire Department and then a few other different fire agencies in this region to come up with opportunities for you. So you get a chance to see what a dispatch center looks like or what medical calls are like or what the fire marshal's office looks like in terms of compliance and fire protection services. So really getting on again, getting hands on some experience and trying to figure out what you wanna do while working towards your degree is gonna be optimal for your success. We always talk about the education pathway when we're looking at uh, when we're looking at degree programs because our intent is that we are always learning, right? We always talk about and we hear about lifelong learners and what that means. But, but for folks to be successful, we should always be striving to learn more. Sometimes that's with formal education and, and sometimes with less formal education. But of course, we're in the college setting. And so we really value that formal education. This degree program, this fire science associate's degree, again, is an associate's degree, two years. But this is gonna build into some opportunities that you might choose to pursue. There are a couple different online opportunities that you can do. So you get your associate's degree from us and there's some different opportunities online. So Homeland Security Emergency Management has an online program. There are some other universities that have bachelor's degrees in, um, in, in fire science or fire service leadership. And then there's a fire science leadership management program down at Pierce College. So really not that far away from us. And our program is going to feed into that as well. So you have a lot of opportunities to, to grow with that. It's important to note that you don't have to have a degree to get a job as a firefighter, but having a degree is going to give you that leg up. It's going to, it's going to give you something to talk about. It's going to help you with your interviews, your OR board assessments, and show that you really have dedicated some time and put some experience, um, some time in, gained experience, and, and really tried to set yourself up for success in that. So it gives you a leg above other candidates who don't have a degree. And then again, as I mentioned, to promote within that. So if you want to fire officer position, you would need a degree for that. And there's a financial incentive to having a degree in most departments as well. So it looks like I've got a quick chat. Let me see if I can if I can see that without. I can't see the chat without ending my screen share. So please, anybody who wants to, to ask a question or add something, John, if that's you, feel free to unmute and, and add something. Uh, it's just noting that the Homeland Security Emergency Management Program is uh, also a BAS program at Pierce College. Oh, perfect. Okay. I didn't realize it was at Pierce too. Yeah, so we have, have, they have two. That's wonderful. Thanks, John. Yeah, a lot of opportunities to, to continue to grow in, in academia and, and get more credentials. And as I mentioned, there's one of our uh, one of our regional partners, uh, one of the fire departments in the area, and it's 2% if you have an associate degree, 
additional 4% if you have a bachelor's degree. And so uh, pretty exciting stuff and, and definitely worth it to, to pursue school. Want to talk about EMT pretty quickly. I know this isn't, we're not speaking of the EMT program or pardon, we're not, yeah, we're not speaking of the EMT program. This is specific to fire science, but the EMT class is part of the fire science degree program. So I did want to give a quick nod to that as well. The North Seattle College EMT program is 12 credits for EMT plus one credit for CPR. So it's a 13 credit certificate program. And this is part of the requirement for the fire science degree. And the reason that we built it in that way is because all of the firefighters in this region are EMTs. They are emergency medical technicians. You might find in a different state in a much more rural fire department that you've got volunteer firefighters who are not EMTs. But in this region, all firefighters are EMTs, emergency medical technicians. And so we've built that into our program because many of the fire departments in this region require that you have your EMT before you are eligible for hire as a firefighter. We've built this into the very end of our fire science program. And the reason for that is the State Department of Health requires that you have, from when you finished class, you only have one year to get certified as an EMT, to get a job as an EMT, to get your Department of Health um, CPR and pardon your EMT certificate. And so it's built into the end of our program so that you don't take EMT early, spend two years taking college classes, and now you are not eligible to work. So we've built in that EMT at the very end of it. However, if you need a job at the same time that you're in school, you might want to talk to us about getting that EMT first. EMT jobs are, are very flexible in, in terms of their schedule because an EMT has to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and, and no holidays. So there are always, always opportunities for work. You could work as an EMT at the same time you're taking college classes. So if you find that you're in a position that you need to be working at the same time, you might choose to do EMT just a little bit earlier in the program. We offer EMT every single quarter and the entry requirements for EMT based on the requirements to get certified by the Department of Health are that you have to be at least 18 years old, you have to be a high school graduate or equivalent, and you have to have a clean background check. You don't have to have a driver's license to take EMT class, but you do have to have a driver's license to work as an EMT. So talk super briefly about be at least 18 years old and be a high school graduate. I know I'm speaking, I think I'm speaking to high school students. Um, what if you're super close to 18 or you're really close to being a high school graduate, but you're not quite there yet. If you're really close to 18 years old and you're really close to having your high school diploma, you could still enroll in the EMT class. We just want to make sure you're at least in your senior year. If you're a sophomore or a junior, it doesn't make sense to take the class yet because you can't even be certified for a year or two, and then you'll have to seek some retraining. So uh, definitely if you wanna work at the same time you're taking the fire science classes, EMT would be a great way to do that. And you'll be able to, to be working with folks that are, that are like-minded and pursuing some of the same goals that you have. EMTs work at fire departments, some police departments, search and rescue, ski patrols, ambulance companies, some emergency departments, and some clinics as well. So a lot of work opportunities, again, at the same time you're pursuing your fire science degree. In EMT class, we work on patient assessment, vital signs, cardiac arrest management, oxygen, medication administration, bleeding, splinting, spinal immobilization, and you'll gain all of those skills in the EMT class that will help you in your job as an EMT and, and in your job as a firefighter. So can you do it? We always get those questions. Can I do this class? It sounds like a lot of work. Can I do EMT or can I do this fire science degree program? I would say 100% yes. We've mapped out that fire science degree program in a really palatable way. There's a good schedule for it. So again, you've got two fire science classes for every single quarter, and then there's an additional general education. And those ones, maybe you've already done them. There's flexibility in when those general education ones happen. The cost is, is um, the cost for the fire science is based on the state tuition schedule. And so if you're taking that full load, you're going to base on that state tuition uh, schedule and there's financial aid available for for degree programs. The EMT class is a separate situation because that is a mostly fee based class. But if you take EMT while in a degree program, your financial aid dollars can go towards that. 
there's always some type of work-life balance. And, and as a student now, you know that there's that work-life balance. You've got to spend some time on your fun stuff and with family and sleeping. You've got to maybe work and you've got to spend time studying. And so, so really it's doable. You just have to know that when you're working and going to school, there's going to be a little bit of sacrifice. So it's, it's time management, but nothing that we're offering is, is too difficult. It's all something that's really easy to do. And North Seattle College has fantastic resources available just to help you be successful. Your equipment and materials, what kind of equipment do you need? The good news is there's not a lot of equipment that you need for, for this degree program. Of course, you're going to need a computer or a Chromebook because our classes are going to be based mostly online. Um, and North Seattle College has, has some opportunities to help you with that if it's something that you don't have. Um, we are not a fire academy situation. Remember that the academy happens after you get hired, so you don't need any fire type equipment. And the books are going to be pretty easy to get. I've got a couple of them here. I think maybe you can kind of see this backwards, but we're using one of the major publishers and the books are going to be easy to get. We try to keep costs low with that. So here's the fire combustion book. Um, here's the introduction to emergency services. And we're going to have these resources um, posted at our bookstore and, and available for you. So here's our link down here. I mean, you certainly can't click it. Um, but I will do a, a quick copy and paste of it, and then I will put that link to our fire science degree program in the chat room. So again, I think I think most people here are are a North Seattle colleagues. So Naya, do you have any questions for any of us? 